Hi, Dave here. I have another tour of a Unitron telescope. This is a classic 145C. This is a 3 inch telescope and it has all sorts of bells and whistles. This was uh, designed to do astrophotography. And let me show you some of the features. First of all, it's got the 3 inch telescope, 3 inch Unitron refractor. Back at the tail here is a uh, a special astro camera and this would use 4x5 film. This has got a 40 millimeter finder. This is a 60 millimeter guide scope. This was so that you could guide the telescope while you're tracking the stars making a long astrophotography exposure on the film. It's also got a counterweight system up here and one of the most important features about this telescope is the clock drive. This is an electric clock drive. We we'll plug into a regular uh, household circuit. I'll be showing you more information about the setting circles here in a moment in some close-ups. This telescope didn't start life as a Unitron 145C. As a matter of fact, it's assembled from various components. A uh, proper name for this scope probably could be called a Frankentron that is a Frankenstein Unitron assembled from various parts and components gathered from uh, all sorts of different locations. Let me show you how that works. Uh, first of all the standard Unitron 3 inch telescope with the equatorial mount that came as one piece. I was later able to come up with the uh, clock drive for the scope and that was actually broken so I had to assemble that, I had to fix it, assemble it it works fine now, but it is a bit of a Frankenstein. This component, I don't know where I got that. Many, many years ago, I got the finder scope. This component up here, the, the um, guide scope, is actually a Polarex brand. Now, Polarex is the European version of Unitron, so it's exactly the same thing. It simply was sold in Europe, so it's from someplace else yet. I don't know exactly where I got the, uh, the camera, I came up with it somewhere. This component up here, I've been unable, I looked and looked, could not find one of these. These are very scarce, hard to buy one of these on eBay, the counterweight system. So I was unable to actually buy one of those, instead I made this. I have a home shop with a lathe and a mill, and I was able to machine this, and I think I did a pretty good job. I worked quite hard, quite diligently to make it as original as possible. And I think uh, only an expert would be able to tell that this is not original, and only probably by looking at it carefully. So anyway, this is what I call my Frankentron telescope. One of the things that makes Unitron so attractive to collectors like me is uh, some of the more arcane attributes. This thing here in particular, this is a setting circle, and I'm pretty sure you can tell in the video how beautifully crafted it is. It's absolutely exquisite to look at. Wonderful piece of machinery. Now, this device works like so. You turn this and you set it up so that the coordinates of the telescope match up with this device. Lock it down, and then when you move the telescope, it actually moves this these setting circles so that you can look locate things in space. This is the way it was done before the age of setting circles. Now you do it electronically. Uh, you know, just hook up your iPhone, tell your iPhone where you want the telescope to go, and it goes there essentially. This is way before that. This is uh, from a long time ago. Um, and the way this device works, this has got uh, a vernier scale here. This scale up here is the vernier. So using the vernier scale, you can interpolate and be uh, very, very precise. You can actually get very, very precise coordinates. Probably nowhere near as good as the modern digital setting circles, but you could do a pretty good job. And back oh, 30 years ago or so, I used such devices to help me find my way in the sky. This is the right ascension setting circle. So the right ascension setting circle is calibrated in uh, what are called hours and minutes. So this is like degrees but different system. Uh, so it's uh, 24 hours around the entire celestial sphere. So that's the right ascension. I'll show you the declination here in the next close-up. Okay, this is the declination setting circle on the Unitron telescope. It's very similar to the right ascension. You can loosen it here, 
calibrate, set it up here. Once you get these things set in, they can be fairly precise. You can see that this changes. And you can see that the the markings here are slightly different. It's the same exact idea, but this is in degrees and fractions of a degree, which are called arc minutes and arc seconds. It's the old fashioned way of doing things. It's fairly challenging to figure out exactly where things were. Could be done, though, and especially someone with lots of practice, you could use this very, very nicely to find your way in the sky. Unitron lovers really appreciate having all the boxes associated with uh, the equipment. To a Unitron collector, those boxes are almost as important as the telescope itself. Really add a great deal to the collectability of such a scope. I hope you've enjoyed my little tour of the Unitron 145C. Thank you.